everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another fun 15 minute mixer. Absolutely. So ladies, start your engines <laughs> or maybe we should just start the timer and get going because, oh man, I'm in a silly mood today and it's because of this kangaroo. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk about a little bit of happy mail, a little bit of progress on my uh, Christmas organizing supply project of July 2019. So we're going to talk about that. And then uh, I don't know what else we'll get into, but I'm sure a little bit of something. Absolutely. So I wanted to show you this beautiful card that Christine sent me as a thank you um, because she was one of the winner of a giveaway. And so not only is it adorable, but, you know, it came from Australia. I mean, is that not awesome? So, of course, this kangaroo, I just fell in love with it. I couldn't get past it. It's just a fuzzy wuzzy little uh, kangaroo. I, w I don't know if I'd want to meet one in person, but <laughs> I'll have to tell you an interesting story. When I was in high school that we had a foreign exchange student and she was from, oh, what country was she from? I don't want to say because I don't want to misspeak, but it was like Norway, Sweden, something like that, uh, Austria, something like that. And so she saw, we live in Pennsylvania, so of course we have white-tailed deer in abundance around here. Okay, so when she saw them, she thought they were kangaroos. <laughs> so we had a field day with her for the entire year that she was an exchange student that every time we saw a white-tailed deer, we would say there's a kangaroo because that's what she thought they were. Oh, God love her. Okay, so anyways, Christine sent me this beautiful card and I have to read um, what she put in here. I'm not going to show some of it, but I want to uh, read what she said because it's so true and I think she may have printed this up herself. But Christine, this is so, this is just really nice. It says, may you be proud of the work you do, the person you are, and the difference you make. Isn't that so true? Christine, that really touched my heart. I mean, it really, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I know we're not supposed to be prideful people, but there is nothing wrong with taking pride in what you do and being the best you can be. I just love that. I'm Thank you. I mean, this is going in my Bible. Absolutely. <laughs> I just love it. And then, of course, look at these gorgeous bookmarkers. I mean, one's got a koala bear and there's that kangaroo or the white-tailed deer, <laughs> whichever you want to call them. These beautiful, beautiful bookmarkers. I just love them. Thank you so much and so then I was playing a little bit of a game here I'll flip this over uh, so we could see if we could name all these animals that Christine put in this card okay and her card is a little interactive I have never seen someone do this before in a card and I like that see how that's interactive like this is not adhered down it's like actual it's almost like the leaves are a die cut into the paper but they're not I mean very very beautiful job, Christine. And then, of course, another kangaroo. Yes, or a white-tailed deer. <laughs> but thank you. That is a beautiful card. I just love that. Okay, and so then I was trying to see if I could name these Australian animals, okay? So I think I may have some of these down. Okay, so Christine, you'll have to give us an educational le lesson, okay? And I know that Mandy's da daughter, Melina, watches. So maybe Marlena already knows what they are. But, okay, so, of course, this would be Australia itself. And I'm assuming these are all boomerangs, okay, because we know that is in Australia, the outback, absolutely. So, of course, we have the kangaroo and the koala bear, okay? So let's just have a little memory game right here. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is a platypus. I don't know if that's true. And I'm going to say this is an anteater. Don't know if that's true. And I, I'm going to say that's an ostrich. And I have no idea what this is. None. None whatsoever. But I'm going to say that's a dingo. <laughs> because I don't know. Because if you've ever watched Seinfeld where uh, Elaine goes, maybe the dingo ate your baby. <laughs> so maybe that's a dingo. I don't know. So, uh, Christine, you're going to have to tell us what are these animals. Because I will tell you, most Americans will only know two of these. The koala bear and the kangaroo. But please tell us what these other ones are. Okay, and I'm going to put them in order. So you tell us one through five, what are these. And if you're not from Australia, see if you can guess what they are. Okay? I'm going to say an anteater, a platypus. I don't know. I thought that was in the water. I don't know. It has to be because of the, the feet there. 
a dingo i have no clue and i'm gonna say that's an ostrich but i don't know so isn't that fun i'm going to absolutely use these on a page i know it'll probably be a homeschooling page but this is just oh this is wonderful thank you christine you gave me such a smile uh on my face and a smile in my heart thank you so much for that really i just and please educate us as to what the animals are and the wildlife is in your neck of the woods absolutely and thank you for my beautiful beautiful bookmarkers they will be very treasured absolutely okay so let's get into my christmas organizing project and see what the progress is on that i mean that is just too fun don't you just love to learn i love every single day of my life i love to learn something absolutely okay so here are my die cuts <laughs> so i have showed in some previous mixtures where i did my chipboard i did my stickers i did my alphas what else all those embellishments i got my six by six paper pads in a box i got my papers in a box so i am down to the wire i'm down to my last category and it was die cuts and i had started that i think i don't know <laughs> it was a few weeks ago and it was just like it took me longer than i thought it would so i would just work on a little bit at a time took it on a couple uh, car trips but it took me a while to do. And I think what it was, because I did take it on a couple car trips, I didn't have as much room, you know, to work it. So I think it took a little bit longer. But, you know, occupied my brain. And uh, so I did get it all done. Excited about that. Okay, so uh, I'm just... I really thought my stickers were going to take the longest, but they actually <laughs> was almost the quickest. So uh, what, is, what this is, is that I just took my die cuts and I use a mounting tab. That's all it is. And if it was an acetate piece, I used a removable adhesive. That's all I did. And then I just put them on a piece of white cardstock that had my whole punches because they're going to go right in my binder. Okay. So uh, how about I go ahead and put them in the binder and then we'll do a little bit of a flip through. Why not? Absolutely. Okay. So let's get the binder out because that puppy is getting filled. Oh, yes. I love it. I mean, just look at this already. This is just stickers and chipboard. Look at that. Okay, so let's add in these die cuts. This is just so fun to do. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this whole process. And organizing, I was just telling one of my lovely subscribers this, that sometimes I think as scrapbookers, we enjoy organizing as much as we do creating. <laughs> and you know why that is? There is some truth behind that. The truth is, is that organizing takes one part of your brain and then creating, you know, playing with the supplies takes another part of the brain. So when you're in an organizing mood, you clearly are in an organizing mood because that's where your brain is at. Okay. That's uh, different than the creative part. Uh, because it takes a different part of your brain. So perhaps one side of your brain needs to relax a little bit and focus on something else. And that is very, very true. And so uh, I know when I'm in an organizing mood, that's exactly what I do. When I'm in a creative mood, you know, mood, and that's what I do. Okay. But it's sometimes it's hard when you're in a creative mood. And that's why we throw stuff all over the place when we're creating. You know how we start with a clean desk? 12 minutes into a project, it looked like, you know, 10 people had been in here crafting. Because that's what happens. You're in the creative mode. You're not in that, oh, let's keep this neat and pristine and put away. No, you're in the creative mode. So that all is absolutely, it's truthful. There is a lot of truth to that because that is how the brain works. Very interesting. Okay, so let's uh, close this puppy up and you can see... There isn't much room <laughs> for anything else. But truthfully, I shouldn't be adding too many more things to this. And if I do, I guess I'm going to have to purge. I mean, I can get some more stickers in here. But let's do the close test. And uh, let's see how much. Oh, yeah. I got a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit there. But it's good. Okay, so let's do a flip through of these lovely die cuts. Or ephemera, as some people call it. Old school gals. We call them die cuts. Yes. Okay, so I think this is all in frame. Okay, so this is how it landed. I have, I just love these. Okay, and these are old. This is when we are memory keepers as we are memory keepers. A very pretty line right there. And then uh, I just filled it up as I went. You know, simple stories, Kaiser Craft. Just beautiful Kaiser Craft. And so if something, it's the same way with my, with my stickers. If something was in the same color family, uh, as I was working on the die cut packs, I worked on them in that order. But again, it wasn't something I was very uh, fanatic about. It wasn't something I really, see, this was more pastels, pastels, October afternoon, Bow Bunny. I just kind of kept them together, okay? But I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too strict about that. The main goal was to get things on 
uh, you know, on the bind, in the binder. Okay, so if you have some big die cuts like this, you can absolutely put them in here. And I have learned over the years, if I want to see something, it's got to go on a page. But if you have a binder that has these pockets, sometimes you can put bigger stickers or bigger die cuts. Or if you just want to put something in here temporarily to get to it, definitely use this pocket, this insert, this little uh, pocket to your benefit, okay? Sometimes I'll do that if I'm in a hurry. I'll just stick it in a pocket and put it away later. But I try not to do that because I can get into a bad habit of that. So I could have easily just put this here to the left in a pocket rather than putting it on an actual piece of cardstock. But I want it on there because I'll see it, okay? And again, kept more of the colors together Again, wasn't too particular about it. And then just putting whatever manufacturer, didn't matter. We remember Keepers, Simple Stories, Teresa Collins, October Afternoon, uh, Basic Gray. And again, just using all those mining squares. And of course, I get into some acetate pieces. Oh, this is pretty. I didn't even remember I had this die cut pack. That's what we, uh, my mind's eye. And then this is came, these came from the Dollar Tree. They were dimensional stickers. I just ripped them apart. And I put them in here in die cuts, okay? And then again, I'm getting into some acetate pieces or transparency pieces, and I just use that removable adhesive because then I can easily pull it off with that removable and then wipe that off, okay? Um, because what else are you going to do? If you put a tab behind that, chances are you may not get that tab completely off when you go to use it. I learned that the hard way from the very beginning. And again, I even had some of these... Uh, you know, little journaling, these are from Lily B back in the day. And even some of these little pockets, I just stuck them in there because I wanted to address them, get them in there. That's what I did. Put them in there. I will now see these. Okay, I saw a couple tags, all that. And then I had some extra pieces floating around. It was like leftovers, kind of scraps. Um, there's some embossing pieces. It was flat. It went in there. There's a die cut. And there was just some, this was some packaging. And so I had just cut it down into like little tabs that I will use on pages. And then of course I added in a couple blank sheets so that when I run across some things in the future, it has a place to land. Okay. So let's see this Christmas binder as a whole. What do we have? And this is how every one of my color binders is set up is that I have all the stickers in the front. Sticker, 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 stickers. And then I go right into die cuts, die cuts, die cuts. And then in the very back is chipboard. And it's easy to get to the chipboard because all you had to kind of do is feel for that page protector. So it's easy to find these three sections. And that's how I do it. But when you set up a binder, you can absolutely set up your binders however you want. Okay? And there's the chipboard. Very minimal amount of chipboard. That surprises me. Okay? That really does. Now, I know... I feel something sticky there. I know that I had a lot of stickers, die cuts, absolutely, but chipboard. But then uh, over the years, I kind of stopped buying chipboard because you can do the same thing with a die cut, just put it on foam tape. So that's probably would make sense, okay? So uh, something I wanted to, uh, oh yes, I got this great question this week. And so it was that someone wanted to set up something like this, but they did not have this amount of stickers. And then we're just talking the color. You know, I have uh, one of these binders in every color of the rainbow, okay? So the question was, how could they do something like this, but yet you don't want to do a binder for every color, okay? This is just my Christmas. You could have one just for Christmas. You could have one just for school. You could have one just for your Halloween, for your Thanksgiving, fall. Uh, maybe you do a lot of uh, dance or sports. Oh, my goodness, yes. You could do a binder just with your sports die cuts stickers and chipboard and then maybe one category would be baseball one category would be football one would be um track you know that type of thing you could do this in any which way you want absolutely and so the question was if you didn't have a lot of stickers could you do something like this yes you could you don't have to do a binder for each color you can set it up in different ways where you could take a binder and say you have a minimal amount of supplies you could do your stickers die cuts and chipboard and maybe in one binder do all your light colors and then your second binder do all your dark colors so you could definitely still do it in rainbow or you could just have a binder set up say if you are a dye hard Kaiser Craft fan. You could put everything you own of Kaiser Craft in a binder. So there's no wrong way to do that. And then also too, something I was talking to one of the ladies on over at Deborah's Facebook group is that uh, Totally Tiffany has the what she calls the system the scrap rack. And many, many, many years ago when she was showing the demo for the scrap rack, she, scrap rack, she was talking about it. And so that is how my color binders uh, 
came forth in my brain was seeing how uh, the scrap rack was because that's a great system. I just don't have the footprint for something like that in my space. So that's why I went with these eight and a half by 11 binders. It's the same thing as a scrap rack. It's just on a much smaller scale because that's really what all the scrap rack is, is that it's a series of notebooks on a great big platform. That's all a scrap rack is. But if you have the space, <laughs> that would be great. So that's really how I adapted these color binders was from uh, Totally Tiffany. I got that idea because that one word she threw out in that demo, representation, started a whole ball of wax for me. And it really was a game changer in my whole space. Just that one word. Okay, so now how I finish this up, because every sticker is in here, every die cut, and every chip word. So I'm done. Oh, yeah, speaking of done, there's the timer. Okay, so if you were doing something for 15 minutes you were done, you're complete, you were a success. Okay, so what I did was I added my Christmas sticker right here, okay? And that was just a die cut. And so what I did was I, to make it a little bit stronger, as I punched a white piece of cardstock in a circle, this is about one and an eighth, and I glued them on top of one another just to make it a little bit thicker, you know? And then what I did is I ran it through my Xyron, okay? So this is what this little Xyron is, and someone tell me, do can you still get refills for these because I haven't bought a refill for this in many years, but it's something I don't use very often, but when I do, I love it. I use this a lot in basically my month in review, and uh, I'll talk about that in the upcoming months, how I use it for month in review. So basically, I just ran that Santa Claus <laughs> through that a little Xyron, and it just makes your own little sticker, okay? And that's how I adhered that to my binder there was just running it through my Xyron because the entire surface is now sticky. So you don't really want to glue it on there. You can't really use a mounting tab. ATG is not going to hold. So I ran it through my Xyron and it holds really, really well. Okay. So then I'm going to dress this up a little bit and that's probably all we'll have for the mixer. You know me, my math starts and it doesn't stop, but I'm going to finish this up. This is the very last part. And after I have this done, okay, Seems like I already have some stuff on here. It's amazing how things get marred up so quickly. As I, when I put something in here, that means I would have organized every one of those supplies. And it took a few weeks to do, but it was fun to do. So what I'm going to do is that when I was organizing my things, I came across these frames, uh, these prints. Okay, and so you can frame them or you can, what I got them for was originally I got them for my little one to take to college to put up on her wall. And she used many packs of these, especially the authentic ones. I don't know if you can still find them, but, uh, and she did, she, uh, in her, uh, suite, I don't call them dorms anymore, uh, that she would put these up, these, and they were just so affordable. And some have a white back, and then some actually have two prints on one. These are both by my mind's eye. And so she did, when I bought these, of course I would buy them on sale because that's the only way you can buy some things because they're too expensive. And so then she would decorate her room and she would keep them. But I have some Christmas ones. So you can put this in an eight and a half by 11 page protector and put it as a filler or an insert in your album. That's always fun. But what I'm gonna do, and I think this is a one. Okay, there's a lot of glitter. <laughs> uh, I think that's the one I'm gonna use is this 25 because I was trying to think I was going to use this one, but I thought, no, I absolutely would put that in a frame and put it in my home. So I don't want it to, I'll use, I'll keep it for that. But this one here, I doubt that I will use this, even though I love turquoise when it comes to Christmas. I don't decorate with turquoise in my home for Christmas. Um, so I'm just going to stick that in there and you could absolutely put that and put a mat on that. Uh, with an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, but I'm not going to in case I decide to use that down the road, but right there. That's just fun. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that with my color binders. It's just this. This is a special one. This is a Christmas one, and I had these because I just found them because you forget you have them. Absolutely. So I love that, and I'll show you if you want to hang on a minute. I have another group of those. Let me find them. Okay, I have a whole uh, I have a pocket folder and this is where I keep all my extra ones like that. Okay. And so these are just different ones I've had through the years. These eight by 10 prints, these authentic ones are really nice, but I, a lot of those I gave to my little one and she has used them. So they really did serve a purpose, especially the ones that have quotes. I would send them to her and she'd put them in a room. So yes, I just keep these all in a folder. Okay. And I have one on my inventory binder in, in the front too. So just a little bit of fun playing with the supplies we bought. Absolutely. So that's going to uh, be all I have for this mixer. Thank you for sticking in for these last several mixers to 
see how this process has turned in, you know, how I've been working on this organizing project. And it's just been, I'm so glad it's done. I wanted to do this last year, just didn't have time to do it, but it's done now. So yes, just believe. <laughs> and it will eventually get done <laughs> absolutely so that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know <laughs>